Hi, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the latest comments from the head of our newly privatised NHS group, the National Institute for Health Protection, which is a very loud alarm bell, I think, in terms of getting anything but health protection from it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So although the public in Britain are a bit more upbeat about the coronavirus pandemic in 2021 now, thanks to the good news that the NHS are delivering a breathtaking rate of vaccination jabs around the country, we should remember that the other necessary measures for combating the disease are still failing hard. Why is that? Do you think it's because the NHS weren't asked to do them? We're currently in a lockdown that is now a month old. We are also not yet near being able to ease it. Although the number of cases per day is now about a third of what it was at the start, it looks like it's come right down. It is still extremely high. If it's not brought down to levels at which test and trace can take over, it will just go straight back up again. And I don't think even a decent test and trace system could be expected to deal with 20,000 new cases a day. The vaccinations so far given out are just the start of what's needed, of course. Uh, to get herd immunity, it was believed that we would need about 90% of the population to have had both courses of the vaccine to be given that 90% protection. So far, very few people have had both courses. And, and only a bit above 15% have had any dose at all. In addition, new variants are in the country that are not as affected by the vaccine as what we've been working with. Obviously, the vaccines are going to be improved to deal with this, as, as happens, for example, with flu vaccines. You're constantly having to deal with new variants. But that's in time. You know, If we keep maintaining the conditions that allow new variants to emerge, and to allow new ones to that emerge elsewhere to come into the country, then it could be a never-ending battle. In addition, just the concept of maybe needing 90% of the population to be vaccinated is daunting enough. Not just in terms of rollout, but in terms of public willingness to receive the jabs on that level. You know, the bottom line is that for everyone's delight at the success of the vaccine rollout so far, we still need test and trace to work for some considerable time to come. The vaccine is not going to deal with the situation quickly. You know, and as I say, whereas the vaccine rollout was given to the NHS to manage, doing really well, our test and trace was given largely to unsuitable private companies, many of whom the government won't name, as well as a wholly unsuitable jockey to, to manage it all. Dido Harding, close to the Conservative Party, of course, and whose only discernible skill in life is being able to ride a horse, was an absolute disaster in the business world and was given the task of managing test and trace. It did not go well. And to give you an insight as to why this might be, let's look at a couple of things she said. So after the second wave hit in autumn, you know, when the government was saying, oh, we're going to get away with the second wave. Matt Hancock was saying there's not going to be a second wave. Days later, oh, there seems to be a second wave. But Dido Harding said nobody expected a second wave. Now, I'm not an expert on pandemics at all, um, but I knew one was coming months before. How? Because I was listening to people who were experts. Do you know who else should have been listening to people who were experts? The head of Test and Trace. And in fact, it's absolutely baffling that she was trying to suggest that nobody expected a second wave because the questions were constantly being put to ministers and herself about a second wave. She can hardly claim that she was clueless about it. So what she's basically saying is she knew about the concept of a second wave and dismissed it because reasons. None of her experts were dismissing it. And it wasn't just test and trace. You know, she was rewarded for her incompetence by being put in charge of the newly formed National Institute for Health Protection. So what this is, for those who don't know, it's the government's way of removing more decision making in the, as regards to the NHS from the hands of public health and medical experts. Because although the way the Conservatives manage the NHS is not ideal, um, Public Health England, which, you know, had coordinated those, nonetheless still had a degree of independence and could take decisions based on what was clinical good practice. 
No, 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 that's what's wrong with it, said Boris Johnson. So this basically represents the modelling of the NHS, in England at least, um, devolved authorities get some say over their version, but over in England at least, they're modelling our NHS on our failed test and trace system, literally. They're going, oh, the test and trace system, that's going to be the model for all of the NHS. Massively privatised with public funds using political cronies to make important decisions. Now, I want to bring something else up that she said much more recently, and this is what's prompted this video. This In this last week, she said that none of us were able to predict the emergence of new variants. Now, I didn't even need to listen to experts to have known that this was entirely predictable. You know, I studied molecular biology and genetics amongst my options. It wasn't my main degree, but I, I did those units at university. Though I hardly think it would be necessary to be able to understand the concept of viruses mutating and forming new strains. I would argue that anyone with more than a passing interest in genetics understands that viruses mutate at a rate of knots because they go through generations extremely quickly. If they're allowed to run rampant, of course you're going to get variants. In fact, we know that from flu. We don't normally really manage flu. We don't try and suppress flu. We just live with it. And part of that living with it is having a vaccination program for which we need to keep developing different vaccines for the different strains. You know, and we also knew that the variants, the, the reason that the successful strains, new strains, will be the ones that give it a competitive advantage over its brothers and sisters. So that would mean being more transmissible or more resistant to treatments or vaccines, for example. But again, actual virologists would definitely have known that and she should have been listening to them. And here's the thing. You know, you think about our response to the virus to date and you think about, you know, the winds and the... If you had to put our response into, you know, was that good? Did it go well? Did it go poorly? The only win in terms of our, you know, role, is the rollout of the vaccine. From a healthcare point of view, you could argue initially the furlough scheme sort of... But, you know, that's that's collapsed. He, he, Rishi Sunak failed to improve that, but that's a totally separate issue. From a healthcare point of view, the rollout of the vaccine, which was done by the NHS... No monkeying about with private companies. And, and that's it. I, I really can think of no other win. Everything else goes in the lose column. And I do worry that it's going to meet problems later on. You know, when we need to persuade more people to take ill. Like at the moment, bear in mind, at the moment, what we're doing is we're vaccinating a lot of people. Great. We've got the, you know, the NHS have, have managed the capacity to do that. But we've also got a lot of people wanting a vaccine. At some point, that's not going to be the case. So then we, we, and we also then run into the issue of needing another round as well. Because remember, the antibodies don't stay in our system for very long at all. You know, I think, I think it's something like you're going to need two full courses a year, really, to, to keep maximum protection. You know, the protection granted by the vaccine doesn't last long enough to see out this crisis. We're going to need multiple courses. You know, so we're going to be needing those vaccines for some time to come. And of course, they're going to have to keep developing to keep up with the new variants. But at the moment, vaccine rollout is a win. But the only one. At some point, the lockdown will end and we will need Test and Trace to take over. The head of Test and Trace was surprised by the second wave and surprised that new variants emerged. She's not going to be ready for the end of lockdown, is she? You know, we are likely to make the same mistakes again this spring and this summer as we did last year, because the same people are in charge, with the exception of Dominic Cummings, and I don't want to downplay his removal, because that could make some difference. He was a colossal imbecile, and government can actually now do things better with him gone. But too many of the other decision makers are exactly the same serial failures that we've had from the start. In addition, when Dido Harding was responding to questions from MPs this week, she revealed to Dawn Butler, Labour MP, that she was spending... £2.75 million pounds of our money every single day on private consultants. I mean, we had this issue with vast sums of money being spent on consultants last year, didn't we? And, and it's bad enough that, uh, that huge sums of money are being spent like this, but the programme is still failing. She's been... How much have they now spent on consultants? That's what I want to know. If it's now nearly £3 million a day... That was last week's data. That's recent. It's now nearly three million a day 
on two and a half thousand consultants, which is over a thousand pounds a day per consultant. Um, I do not even know. You know, after all this time and the system still failing, why? Why are we paying these consultants? You know, tests are still not being returned quickly enough for many people. Rate of contact tracing is also very poor. And again, you could look at it and you could go, well, as the number of new cases comes down, that should get easier. Fewer people will be developing symptoms, which means fewer people need tests, so easier to manage the testing and getting the results back from the lab. Fewer people testing positive will mean fewer people need tracing as well, so lighten the load there. But then I came across this. Apparently, test and trace are making, uh, uh, basically dropping a load of their frontline workers, the people who carry out the contact tracing, for example. They're, they're making them redundant. It's like, oh, and, and the reason given is because, oh, well, we're, gonna, we're getting fewer cases. We don't need them. It's like, hang on a minute. You're failing to turn results over quickly. You're failing to get in contact with, with people. Some people are testing positive and none of their contacts are being contacted. You're not managing now. You could almost go with it if you're managing and then you've got far less workload and so you don't need as many people, but they're not managing the workload they have. Is that really a time to shed the frontline stuff? Don't, don't get me wrong, absolutely shed the consultants. Except the interesting thing is I haven't seen that they're shedding any of those consultants. And the thing is that, that both testing and tracing were unacceptably inadequate last summer as well, when the rate was at its lowest. And you might think, well, that was last summer, Phil. You know, they'll have learned lessons and it'll be okay when the lockdown ends this time, if indeed they end the lockdown when it's got right down, they don't do it too quickly. But that is to think that the most senior official now in England's healthcare system, as far as I can tell, learns lessons when she was completely caught by surprise by the second wave even existing, despite the fact everyone was talking about it for months before, and also caught out completely by surprise by the fact that if you allow this virus to run rampant, you can get new variants emerging. I mean, you could get new variants emerging even if you tried to stamp it out. And everyone was talking about that for months before as well. I want to know how a, camp, how a competent manager can pay two and a half thousand consultants over a thousand pounds a day after all this time and still be failing. And in addition, you know, um, if test and trace isn't coping with the current load and has never coped with any load ever since its inception, even when it was very low last summer or relatively low, how can they justify dropping frontline staff when they're already failing to meet targets and not drop the much more expensive consultants. So yeah, a lot of optimism at the moment due to the good starts to the vaccine rollout, as well as the reduction in number of new cases due to the lockdown. But I have to say, I'm rather afraid that I don't think the optimism will be justified when Harding's team has to take, start taking over again, you know, in, in terms of the response over the next month or so. But we'll see, I suppose. But I'd put no hopes in the vaccinations by then, because think about it this way. We're, we're sort of, at the, look, at the moment, it looks like we're playing on easing restrictions round about the week beginning of the 8th of March is when um, the government wants schools to start opening up again. So that, you would think, coincides with not completely dropping the lockdown, but at least maybe easing restrictions or moving back into the tier system. Now, even with the current rate of rollout, that still means that most of the people actually spreading the virus won't have even received their first dose because the government priority has to, been to vaccinate the most vulnerable, which I'm not criticising, by the way, just stating that that has been it. But the most vulnerable are the ones who are less likely to have gone out and about spreading the virus anyway. Um, that's just the general population who, who are fit and, considered fit and healthy and are, are low risk who will be the ones going out and spreading the most of it, and they won't have received even a single dose. You know, because that, that's likely to take months. But some protection would have been better than nothing. I know some people will say, well, you can have your full course and be given maximum protection. You could still infect others. Yes, but we do now know that asymptomatic people are much less infectious than people with symptoms. So it would be, it would help a great deal if the people who were going out and about were vaccinated. And again, I'm not saying that they've got the priorities wrong. I'm just saying 
that when people start going out and about again, they won't actually be vaccinated. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.